Hello, welcome back. Today I'm going to be making a note card look beauteous. I forgot that thing over there. Now basically this is gonna be a rough sketch of kind of what do I want how do I want to design this note card? I can rough sketch it first or just go straight into it. Sometimes I just think I'm rough sketching and then I just go straight into it. This is gonna be more of like a zentangle where it's just absolutely nothing. I decided to put a swirl inside this one. For this one, I'm going to take some lines, put a dot down here, put a line, and then just do this kind of weird little design. And for the first few minutes, you're just kind of doing a rough sketch of what do you want to do? What are you going to end up working with, with all your different kinds of ways of doing it? Each one, I want each one to be done by some different medium. The nail polish one may be the hardest because I'll have to do that last, otherwise I could smear it and that does not look pretty. It's just playing with shapes. Just, just have fun. Don't try to think too hard with this. Just if you want to do something, add it. If you think something would look cool, just do it. It's your art. And if you mess up, just use your sketch and pencil so that you can easily erase and restart because this is not what it's going to look like in the end. Well, it is, but there's going to be more to it than this. It just kind of looks like outlining it. Take that and outline this whole just kind for of fun. shape. Just for funsies, I'm going to add another outline to it. Just kind of make it look really psychic. Just outline them again. And once you're done with your sketch and you're happy with it, because this is going to have a lot of fine detail, I'm going to do the fine detail in this. You are going to want to do bath background colors first, and I just remembered that like that's something that you should do first. And background colors are best done in a bigger kind of color setting. And for this, I think I'm going to set the mood with a periwinkle color. name this acid trip just because there's so much going on it's gonna look very weird and it can you don't have to make it look normal in any way it is up to you what your art looks like and I've said this before but don't put your name on something you're not proud of because if you're proud of it, that's the only time you should ever put your name on it. I'd rather put my name on something that I'm proud of, even if it's the worst piece of art that's ever been on this planet. If I'm proud of it, I'll put my name on it. I could make the best piece ever, and if I'm not proud of it, I won't claim it. Although if I make a piece that looks really nice, I'm usually 
proud of how it turns out, so this is very rare. But in my art classes, sometimes my art teacher will make me make changes, and I'm not happy with some of the changes, but I have to make them because otherwise I can't turn it in and she'll downgrade me for it. And it is for a grade in the end. I have to pass the class, otherwise that looks very bad. So, I do what she says. Sometimes it really does help. Sometimes what they do is helping. Sometimes what they do is takes away from the vision that I had. And that can be okay. It's not necessarily bad if you have a vision and you differentiate from it. Because sometimes a vision needs to change. And it doesn't have to be the same vision that you've always had from the beginning. And sometimes it is best to go into an art piece like especially this without a vision of what you want. Because then you can do whatever you want to it with no problem. And it usually ends so up I'm going to take up. pretty nice this dark grayish color. To kind of mimic the pencil line better. Art doesn't have to be perfect and sometimes what makes some pieces great is the imperfections riddled within it. Not all accidents are bad. Not, not always is it to get something like exactly on your vision. That, that doesn't always end up working out very well because sometimes your vision has issues. Take this dark purplish color and just fill in the little cracks left. Boom. And let's work with the shapes. You can also do intricacies inside of things. So let's do a red and orange inside of. going to do a triangle pattern and then I'm going to do the inverse orange and color it in yellow let's go with a pink and purple and then a blue and green one. And they're all gonna be in the same section. And what color matches all those? Black, obviously. My soul. Mm. I'm gonna do some to select some colors, and this is basically for a scratch, kind of. I'm not gonna color that. Hmm. I'll color this. This is gonna be nail polish. This is going to be done through scratch work. And for that, I'm just going to like lightly scratch into it. Then 
I'm going to take another color and do the exact same thing. and just apply it so that it has like a background color is what it feels like Those could be the colors we use. the lines in black, that's what I was going to do. And we're going to outline that in this very dark blue color. Let's take this blue color, because that's totally going to stand out against the tide, take it and apply it to the edge. did it. So adding a different kind of flaky stuff. So we're just going to, because this is how you lightly sprinkle something, right? Right? If you could please like and subscribe for more, you can follow me on Instagram at Isla underscore snow or on Twitter at Isla Snow Matera and it's spelled out in the description below or on the screen. Have a great day. Bye!